Hello, everybody. Are you ready for another bridge tip? Today, I'm going to be talking about splinter bids. I love splinters. I use them all the time, and I find them really, really helpful for evaluating my hand to see if we have game, if we have slam, or getting to the right spot. Let's take a look what a splinter bid is for those that don't know. All right, a splinter bid is an unusual jump and always promises at least four card support for partner's last bid suit with shortness in the jumpsuit. All right, we're gonna see what that looks like in a minute. Shortness is a singleton or a void. Knowing this extra information really does help in determining whether game or slam may be viable. Knowing that your side has nine trump and shortness in a suit allows you to reach a slam or a game on less high card points than the traditional required values. And I'm telling you, it works great. Splinter bids can be made by either the opener or the responder, and they can occur on any round of the bidding. However, I place splinter bids by the responder on their first bid as a limited bid. I play it 11 to 13-ish. So if my partner opens a spade, and I respond four clubs, that's an unusual jump. That would show that I have a singleton club, four trump for partner, and I have somewhere in between 11 to 13 high card points. Not enough for slam unless my splinter makes your hand have that magical fit. We're gonna see what the magical fit looks like in a minute. Opener doesn't want to guess whether to bid on if it goes one spade, four clubs, and you're unlimited, and you can have 16, 17, 15. Your partner doesn't know, and sometimes will bid key card or blackwood, and you'll be too high because you only had your 11 or 12. So therefore, you should really play them limited. Like I said, I happen to play them 11 to 13-ish. If you have more than that, you should use Jacoby two no. One spade, two no trump. That promises an opening hand with at least four trump. It doesn't talk about shortness yet, but it does give you room to explore for slam. You can find out about singletons later on, but I don't like my partners to have to guess what I have. So I think the splinter bid is a very specific bid and helps paint a picture for partner. All right, let's take a look. Here's an example. Partner opens one spade. And here you have 11 high card points, four spades, and a singleton diamond, okay? This would be a good hand to splinter. You would bid four diamonds. The splinter bid is the shortness. So the auction would go one spade by your partner, and you would bid four diamonds. Very, very specific. And that's what I would do on this hand. But in the second hand, partner opens one spade. You have 16 high card points. You are too strong to splinter to bid four clubs. You're way too good. So in this hand, you would either bid Jacoby two no, or you could bid two diamonds. That would still be a game force, but you're too good for a splinter. Okay. What is a magical fit? After your partner splinters, the opener looks at his holding in the splintered suit. He evaluates his hand. Does the splinter bid help his hand? Does it hurt it? Does he have a lot of wastage in the splintered suit? Wastage is wasted high card points. We're going to look at that. Then the reevaluation of the hand will determine if slam is possible or unlikely. Here in this example, East opens one spade and you splinter and bid four diamonds. You have a perfect splinter hand. 
Now the East comes back to his hand and looks at it. He's got Ace King of Diamonds, which seems good. Those are good controls, we like that. But that's opposite your shortness. So we call this a lot of wasted values. Seven of his 13 high card points are in the hand that you splintered. That means that with these hearts and clubs, they're not fitting very well with your hand because the king of diamonds doesn't do you much good. It gives you a pitch, but it doesn't help you to do one pitch. So we consider this wastage and we don't look for slam. So the auction would go one spade, four diamonds, splinter, and I would sign off in four spades. However, on this hand, it's magic. It seems like it's similar, but it's really not. Let's take a look. One spade is bid by East, then West now splinters, has a perfect splinter. And now your ace of diamonds is a trick and you know you have no more losers in the diamond suit. You have good controls in all the other suits and you have a singleton. So controls are aces and kings. So you know you have no losers in diamonds. You know you have a nine card spade fit and your partner has all their high cards working with no points in diamonds. So this has an excellent chance to make slam. So what would you bid? I would just go to four no trump right after the splinter bid. I would just key card and ask and look at this. You're in an excellent slam on only 26 high card points combined. Magic. All right, let's test your hand evaluation now. You, you opened one heart. Partner bid three spades, okay? That's also an unusual jump. He jumped two levels. That is a splinter bid. Here is your hand. What call would you make next? So he splintered in your wasted values. You have ace, king, jack. So what would you bid? This is sort of a trick question. I snuck it in. I would bid three no trump. You know, all of your partner's high cards are in the diamonds and the clubs and the, and the hearts. He doesn't have any points in the spades with the splitter pit. But you are so heavy in spades that you have three controls. So if the lead was coming to you in spades, that would be good. I would bid three no trump to tell partner, I've got a lot of controls in spades. And your partner can always correct to four hearts if he doesn't want to play three no. But the hand might fit, fit perfectly for three no. So always describe what you're looking at. Told you it was a trick question. You expected me to see lots of wastage. Well, it is, but in this case, it's three controls and I would bid three no. All right, let's take a look at the next one. West opened a diamond and you here bid a heart. And now West bid a spade. So West opened your minor. You responded a heart, and now he bid a spade, and you have four spades. So what should you bid? You should bid four clubs. You have a singleton club. That would tell partner, same thing. I have four spades, all right? I have four spades. You already know I have hearts, and I have a singleton club. That singleton club might be just the thing he needs to, to know to get to slam. You have a second five card suit here, right? And look at you have queen third of diamonds for his first bid suit. That's so a beautiful hand. You just might get to slam when nobody else does because you made that nice splinter bid. Okay, let's test it again. You've opened a spade. This is you now and partner bid four hearts. I'm telling you right now, everybody in the room thinks four hearts is to play, but not today. Today we are learning about splinters. It's not hearts. It's a splinter bid in support of spades. So let's take a look. I hold this hand, I've got six spades 
and I've got the good controls of the diamonds and the clubs. And when my partner shows me huh, a singleton heart, now I don't have three losers in the suit. I only have one. And he showed me a, like at least 11 high card points. What would I bid next? Well, I think, da 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 da, I would key card. Look at, he's got to have all these other cards and clubs and diamonds. And I would find out if we have the ace of clubs and we know we won't have any spade losers, where are our partner's card? I would look for slam. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about splinters. I love splinters. There's so much more we could do with splinters, but I want you to practice them first. And if you have any questions or if you have a lesson that you'd like to learn about, please feel free to email me anytime. Michelin on Bridge at AOL.com. And I'm happy to see you all again and happy bidding.